Sometimes you just have to leave. Your body tingles, your legs feel restless, you feel trapped. Usually a stroll in the park will do the trick. This time I decided to try something different. Not too shaggy. I made it to Paris. Barely hate airports. Also, am I in Paris? Cause I just told the receptionist C si, instead of we. Oui. So we're off to a great start. We're not in Spain, Lana. We're in France. So you may be wondering why I'm in Paris. Honestly, no reason. I just felt like going somewhere. So I figured, why not just go to Paris? That's not exactly true. I do know why I'm here and I'll tell you later. I have no plans. I'm a planner. Lists, bullet points, routine, details. I don't like unpredictability, chaos, or to be left with questions. But sometimes it's not about what we want, rather what we need. And they're not always the same thing. I believe I needed a couple days of random wandering, to walk down unknown streets and to pick stores and restaurants without looking them up on Yelp beforehand. Even the most chronic planners need to get a bit lost sometimes. You may not be able to tell, but I'm very much out of my comfort zone here. Filming myself in public feels so silly still, even though it's not. I'm just doing what I love, capturing experiences and documenting my life. Solo travel is like a crash course in learning to plan, navigate, communicate, and to problem solve. It's also as if your senses are heightened. You pay more attention, you notice stuff. I notice how many people actually hang out with themselves. I notice how choosing outdoor seating at a restaurant in Paris feels like eating in a smoking room. I notice how when you're going by foot in a new place that you're curious about, time kind of stops. Going away somewhere every time things start to feel dull isn't realistic for most people. So I guess the secret is finding ways to maintain that curiosity even in places that are familiar to us. I notice how, when you're by yourself, the chance, or risk, depending on how you see it, of strangers coming up to you and talking to you is much greater. I also noticed that there were moments where I wished I hadn't been alone. Okay, fine, I have Starbucks. Judge me if you want. I did not experience the stereotypical Parisian coldness or rudeness. One encounter in particular stood out to me. I just had such a pleasant exchange with an older gentleman. I was walking past where he lives, so somewhere in this beautiful, beautiful neighborhood, and he saw that I was filming, and so he told me to follow him for like a tiny bit right outside his apartment where there had been bunch of flowers like the day before. Unfortunately, they had died because of the heat, but he was so nice. He was also a photographer. I've just been having such pleasant encounters. Day one in Paris done. I'm about to go to bed. I'm still wearing boots because there is a uh, carpet. You know the type of carpets that covers the entire floor? I think they are the most gross carpets. I don't understand why places have them. I also have my own pillowcase because I'm just weird that way. I found one of the biggest downsides of solo traveling to be having a curfew. I love late night dinners, but I didn't feel comfortable staying out that long. shorts and their dress always this is not a good situation so i did something and now i'm feeling conflicted i posted a story saying i'm in paris does anyone want to hang out thinking maybe one or two people would be like yeah i'm also in paris so many people wrote saying they're in paris and they would love to meet and now i don't even know how to get back to anyone should i just post on my story saying yeah i'll be at this place at this time so what if no one shows up?
Being away from Fred, my puppy is hard. He stayed with my family while I was gone, and I might have FaceTimed them one too many times, demanding that they show him to me. Every time I'm away from him, I fear he might think I've abandoned him. Don't do that. Don't do that. Why? Okay, I guess filming like this is risky, so I'm just gonna put my camera away. I love life. The colors, shapes, smells, sounds. I'm restlessly curious about all the things that I have yet to experience, but... And I'm resisting the urge to get all existential here. Does anyone else just look around sometimes and wonder, what the fuck are we all even doing here? We're just here. A bunch of people getting dressed, going out, meeting people, looking at things, wandering, doing stuff. But for what purpose? The hedonist would say the purpose is to have a pleasurable time. Evolution says the purpose is to survive and reproduce. The nihilist will look you in the face, laugh and say, purpose? That's cute. What are your thoughts? Okay, are you ready for the grand finale? I arrived in Paris feeling silly, filming myself. I'll be leaving Paris having not only been filming myself, but also having asked a stranger to film me. I still felt silly, but I did it. This trip was yet another reminder of that. To be afraid, and then do it anyway. I started doing this thing where whenever I travel, I buy myself a book. And so I went to a bookstore and I just told them, what's a classic French book by a French author? And then they gave me a few choices and I went with this one. Proust du coup de chez soin. Yeah, it's by, I don't know. Is that the author? 